Vanuatu, meaning country that stands up, is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Ni Vanuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language or Bislama. English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliette Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her, but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat and wrapped in leaves. Vanuatu ancestors lived on their own islands, in their own villages. Each had their own government, languages, food, styles of clothing, traditional healers, and midwives. Homes had thatched roofs. Although people had been living on the islands for 3,000 years, in 1774, Captain James Cook named the islands New Hebrides, as they reminded him of his Scottish homelands. Blackbirding was prevalent between 1847 and 1904. South Pacific Islanders were kidnapped, tricked, or coerced into working for very little or no pay on plantations in Queensland, Fiji, and Hawaii. By 1906, New Hebrides became a colony with a more centralized government ruled jointly by Great Britain and France. Political independence and a homegrown constitution were established in 1980. Vanuatu has a literacy rate of 64%. Secondary education enrollment was 35% in 2015. There are strategies to increase this figure significantly by 2030. Vanuatu's economy is largely based on tourism, construction, and offshore financial services. Big hotels and resorts are owned by foreigners. A minor income earning activity is Nagol which involves men climbing flimsy 100-foot towers and diving headfirst into empty space with nothing to break their fall but vines tied to their ankles. Others sell their traditional weaving. Manufacturing industries contribute only 5 to 9 percent of the gross domestic product. Education curriculum points youths to white-collar jobs. 
In the current Vanuatu democracy, the constitution provides for gender equity, but there is limited political will to implement it. In the 2020 federal election, no women were voted into power. Women represent 40% of the labor force in both public and private sectors and are often the primary caregivers for family members. Gender-based violence is a serious issue affecting women and girls. Approximately 60% of women in Vanuatu have experienced some form of physical and or sexual violence. Access to healthy foods, safe drinking water, and adequate sanitation are concerns, especially for children in many areas of this republic. Most deaths in those under five years of age are due to malnutrition. There has also been an increase in stunted growth and development in children. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women. World Day of Prayer 2021, prepared by the Christian women of the Republic of Vanuatu and adapted for use in Canada by the Women's Interchurch Council of Canada. This World Day of Prayer service is being shared with you by the churches of Charleswood in Winnipeg. Given the public health orders made necessary by the global COVID-19 pandemic, we have chosen to come together in an online format, which will allow us to worship with others beyond our community. Participating churches include Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic Church, Gloria Day Lutheran Church, Charleswood Mennonite Church, Charleswood United Church, St. Mary's Anglican Church, and Minneota United Church. We welcome our sisters and brothers around the world in the name of Jesus. Vanuatu is a small country of islands located in the South Pacific Ocean, east of Australia and just west of Fiji. The black and white sandy beaches, coral reefs, with colored fish, lovely birds, and white, and fruits and nuts in the forest, all make the islands a pristine environment. Even though they are vulnerable to frequent tropical storms, earthquakes, cyclones, tsunamis, and active volcanoes. Melanesian people, along with Polynesian, are the primary source of Vanuatu's culture, languages, traditional values, and spirituality. In the past, each island and village of Vanuatu had their own chief and style of governance, their own gods, and their own language. Their thatched houses were made from leaves and trees, using stone axes. Women and men would come together at the Furia, or village meeting house, to discuss major issues. The Republic of Vanuatu was formed after independence in 1980 from a French and British condominium government. Today, Vanuatu proudly waves its flag and its coat of arms, which reads, In God We Stand. The theme of this year's World Day of Prayer service is build a strong foundation. Let's begin our worship with the words of worship found in the first verse of Psalm 127, which say, Unless the, world, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. Happy is everyone who trusts the house builder God, let us be one of those. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. 
be thankful for the great things God has done. Holy, holy, holy God, creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. God is present in the history of all people from yesterday to today. Loving God, on whom Vanuatu stands, we adore you. Thank you for the fellowship with each other and with sisters and brothers around the world gathered by the World Day of Prayer. Thank you for the great and wonderful things in our lives and in our nations. You grant us authority, wisdom, knowledge and understanding to care over all beautiful islands and countries. Thank you for the fertile lands, for the fresh air, clean environment, beautiful sunshine, blue seas and still waters of Vanuatu Islands. Thank you for the sweet melody of the birds, the sound of land animals, and the mystery of the fish in the sea and rivers. Thank you for the waterfalls that rain down their waters and serenely declare to us your greatness and power. Thank you for the sound of children singing, laughing, shouting, and for the prayers and songs of the old and young, all of which manifest the joy of your love. Praises, glory, and honor be unto you alone forever. Life-giving God, receive our praise. Prayer of Confession. Let's confess to God, who is faithful and just to forgive us. From 1 John 1, 9. God, we stand before your house of grace to confess our sins. We confess that we have listened to your word, but have not acted on it. Often we do the things we ought not to do and leave undone the things we ought to do. We face adversities and challenges in our homes and nations. We try to build our homes thinking we are building on the words of Jesus Christ, but we have actually built on sand. We want to be changed. Restore us back to do what is right and just. Creator God, we confess that we have polluted the environment and harmed the sea creatures by throwing garbage into their habitats. We have endangered marine life and ruined sustainable livelihoods. We know we can change. We confess regret and commit to fulfill the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. God, hear our prayers. Rejoice and be glad. Our God is full of mercy and abounding in steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Prayer of Commitment. God is looking for a house in which to live. In Isaiah 66, 1-2, God asks, What is the house that you would build for me? We come humbly before you and pray that you will grant us your spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth. Lead and guide us to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. Humbly we offer ourselves to be a house where you can dwell. By the power of your word, transform our lives and our nations. Make us a household of justice and peace. Gracious God, accept our commitment. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions of our faith and fault on grace. In the love of Christ shall their divisions all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us be.
Education for all is not mandatory. The school system is either in French or English. Islama is, learned, is a learned language to overcome communication barriers in the town, but in rural areas, they also have their own languages. Equal access of boys and girls attending school is still in progress. Today, I am reading Retta's story. I am the second child from a family of eight. I left school at the end of year six, as there was no money for me to continue my education. My family could only afford to educate my older brother and not me, as I am second born and a girl. One day I heard there was a sewing class for girls at a local center. I applied and was accepted, but my dad had no money to pay the fees. I was disheartened, but I did not have my own money to finance my studies. I sincerely desired to enhance my education, but there was no opportunity in a formal school system. Then I turned my attention to the church to fill my desire to learn. I joined the youth group, attended Bible studies, and later got involved with the women's ministry. With this determination and faith in God, I found ways to educate myself. I now make items and sell them at the mama's market where other women like me with little education can learn a living with this new skill. I care for my family with whom God blessed me. My husband and I have three children. I praise God for the blessings over my life. I thank God for being the source of my strength and for helping me put into practice what I have learned. I have become strong and wise in the Lord. Today, I am reading Mothy's story. My little brother and I grew up in a single parent home. When my mother remarried, she left us with our grandparents. After my dad remarried, he took us to live with his new family. When our stepmother gave birth to her children, her attitude towards us changed altogether. 
With more children to feed and no room in the house for all the children, I had to find my own food in the streets and slept outside the house in a shack. I used an old copra sack as a blanket to protect me from the cold. Somehow, I met some Christians who told me that God loved me. I could not understand this kind of love in the midst of my suffering, but I decided to trust. I trusted that God would take care of me, even though my family was not sheltering me. This trust grew inside me and became the foundation of my life. I am strong in my Christian faith and share my story with others that we should trust in God and God's provisions. Today, I pray for those children who, like me, grew up almost by themselves. We know that God loves them, and we pray a home for children may be provided in every country around the world. Vanuatu population grows in one of the highest in the Pacific region. Malnutrition is a concern in both rural and urban areas. Although the tradition of growing organic staples in gardens is strong, the food industries of powdered milk and unhealthy processed products are getting worse, are getting access to babies and children. Thank you. Today I am reading Jack Linda's story, I Come From a Rural Village. Ever since I was a young girl, I dreamt of working in tourism in Port Vila. I traveled to Port Vila to get a job in hospitality, but I don't have the training to get the job I dream of. I have no family here, so I am living on the outskirts of the city. I have no money for proper accommodation, food, or even to return to my village. I know that this is not the plan God has for me, but I don't know what to do. I pray that rural areas of Vanuatu be valued and young people, find, and young people find the opportunities they search for in their own communities. I trust that God will provide for young people to grow and contribute to the well-being of Vanuatu. With 75% of the population in rural areas with little employment options, Young people must migrate to areas with economic opportunities. They come with minimal education and no trained skills to enable them to gain employment in the city. High unemployment amongst young people creates a generation that sees no future, which is a great loss for the country. There is a need for policies and programs for the betterment of rural areas so young people can stay in these communities to be educated and to have jobs. Listening to the Word of God. Let's hear the Word of God according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came down, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Just love and 
Bible text for the Vanuatu program comes from the teachings of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, found in the book of Matthew, chapters 5 to 7. Jesus is concerned about the hungry and thirsty crowd that went to the mountain and heard the word of God to live better lives. It gives context to what Jesus says about his words being heard and acted upon in verse 24. It is not an empty instruction. Behind it is the full understanding of Jesus' ministry and the kingdom of heaven. All the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount deliberate on two verbs, to hear and to act. The results that will come depend on the choices that are made and the actions taken. Jesus' closing words for his teaching on the mountain is a story of comparison. The wise builder is safe, while the foolish one loses his house. The wise act on Jesus' words, while the foolish do not. Let us consider this carefully prior to making our own decisions in life. Let us rise and build our homes, our nations, and the world on the words of Jesus who reminded us about the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. This is our solid foundation. This is the basic principle of our message today. Let us rise and build our homes, our nations, and the world on the words of Jesus, who reminded us about the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. Major Shirley King of Toronto, WIC board appointee from the Salvation Army of Canada, will now share her devotional message. Do you remember as a child in Sunday school singing the fun chorus that says, The wise man built his house upon the rock. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the house on the rock stood firm. Then we would follow with the refrain, The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the sand went flop. I remember learning at a very early age the truth that the Lord Jesus is the rock, the solid rock. He is the foundation of all Christian living. He is our friend and our example for living. And it is in him we find our hope. I'm Major Shirley King from the Salvation Army, and I serve as the Divisional Secretary for Women's Ministries in the Ontario Division. I'm thrilled to serve WIC as the Secretary of the Board, and I'm so pleased to join the women of Vanuatu as we consider their message of building on a strong foundation. Now, I admit to you that I am no builder, and in fact, I know very little about building physical structures. One might say, I can barely hammer a nail straight. One thing I have learned is that constructing anything, whether it be a layered cake or a Lego creation from blocks, developing new friendships, or creating any piece of work, I need to start with a good foundation. Once the foundation is laid and the supports are in place, then the remainder of the process of creating can be strategically carried out with a fair amount of ease, so that in the end there is a feeling of complete satisfaction. These verses about the wise and foolish builders taught by Jesus and chosen as the theme by the women of Vanuatu are instructions for practical wholesome, and holy living. In this nugget of a parable about the wise and foolish builders, Jesus uses the imagery of rock and sand and describes the tragedy and triumph of building a life from two very different perspectives. He clearly teaches us to build our lives on a solid foundation, to build on things that matter and make a difference. A firm foundation will hold together when the storms of life come beating all around you. He is saying to his listeners, be wise builders of your life. And he provides direction for how we are to be in relationship with others, to live at peace with ourselves, 
and to be in fellowship with the Lord our God. I love the response of the people as we read from the message paraphrase of this account, where we are told, when Jesus concluded his address, the crowd burst into applause, and it was apparent that he was living everything he was saying. This was the best teaching they had ever heard. This is the good news they needed to hear. This is the good news we need to hear. This is the news that fills us up, sends us out, and moves us into action. So as the crowd of people heard Jesus that day and were moved by his teachings, we can also be moved by his message for us. Allow me to share with you what has resonated with me as I have considered this scripture. In building a firm foundation for our lives, we must survey wisely and make good choices. In this parable, there are two people. They had the same intent. They wanted to build a house. Their responses were different. The outcome of their choices was very different. When the storms came, the house on the rock stood firm while the house on the sand collapsed. There was no substance to hold it in place. It was a dangerous construct from the beginning. There was no foundation. In the building of a firm foundation for our lives, we must dig deeply. I'd like to suggest two components of digging deeply that make for a secure foundation. First of all, be in fellowship with the Lord your God through Jesus. Go deep in your prayer life. Seek the heart of God. Allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. Go deep in your study of Scripture. It is the living Word of God. It is nourishment for the soul. It will make you strong. Go deep in your exercise of faith and go deep in your service to others. Secondly, live at peace with each other. Being kind and living in simplicity is so important as we reflect the love of Jesus. As we are building the solid foundation, we must be mindful of storms. I believe Jesus would also have us hear that storms will come so be sure you have built on a solid foundation. These are foundational words, words to build a life on. I am mindful of the reality of our friends in Vanuatu who know far too well the impact of storms, coastal areas that are suddenly engulfed by devastating wind, destructive waves, and torrential rain. In preparation for these forecasted storms, Individuals do all they can to protect their homes in the time of storm. Every precautionary measure taken in planning and executing the plan for a firm foundation will protect in the day of trouble. So too, when storms approach in our personal lives, we need to be prepared. And now when I hear the childhood song about the wise man and the foolish man, the rock and the sand, the rains and the floods, I am much more aware of the truths of surveying wisely and making good choices, digging deeply and being prepared for the storms that will inevitably come our way. So in this hope, we rejoice today and sing with the psalmist in Psalm 62, He solid rock under my feet, breathing room, for my soul, I'm set for life. He is the solid rock. He is the firm foundation. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Singing holy. Glad. 
Let us be united in prayer with Vanuatu and the world. Everlasting God, the God on whom Vanuatu stands, we ask you to help us stand for peace in all nations and in all families. We commit the leaders and people of Vanuatu into your wise hands. We want to stand against the forces of injustice present in our nations. Give us this authority over our islands and nations. We pray that we can live in unity, love, and peace in the context of ethnic and cultural diversity like Vanuatu and so many other places around the world. We are grateful for any positive community building that resulted from COVID-19. Bind us together in love, peace, and joy. We remember people living in places prone to natural disasters and the hazards of cyclones, hurricanes, volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis, and those experiencing food shortages and famine. We lift up our concerns for those who suffer internal anguish from substance addictions and loneliness. We pray for victims of domestic and gender-based violence and other forms of marginalization. Almighty God, protect communities from disasters and suffering. Heal the souls of the people and let them feel the love. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. dwelling presence in and with us. Let God guide you, lead you, restore you, and heal your nation. Let God's will be done in your house as it is in heaven. Remember, as you go out, everyone who hears the words of Jesus and acts on them will be like a wise person and the house will withstand the floods. Go and build your house on Jesus' words. Go home with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. This is our strong foundation. We will follow Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
The World Day of Prayer is a worldwide ecumenical women-led movement. Each year, we admire the strength of communities who participate. We emphasize with their cares. We are encouraged by their faith. And we stand in solidarity with each other through our prayers and actions. Thank you. Yeah.